this has been Urban Era. I've been Nisi, DJ, Aida. We had the wonderful, amazing Jermaine. Thank you, Robinson. Jermaine. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Now, like, subscribe. Audio's on YouTube. Video's on YouTube, actually. Audio's on Anchor. Don't forget the Anchor. Yeah, definitely like the Anchor one. Make sure you yeah. follow Jermaine as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Please. Jermaine needs a bag. And when he gets the bag, we get the bag. Again. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the bag. <laughs> okay. Now, I see the Uggs in the tracksuit with a brand you told me that I've never heard of before. Yeah. yeah. So, how do you source your fashion? Um. So, a part of it is through me contacting VRs. Another part of it is me using Instagram and just kind of like seeing who's making clothes. Um, I like to pay attention to people by university. Um, I also like to pay attention to just who's making clothes like in their bedroom, you know, just kind of like keeping up in a sense. Okay. So how difficult does that get to be? Because for example, yeah, I'm an outsider, so I'm not part of the fashion industry. But when I'm on like social media, fashion and uh, music and entertainment is like three of the most pushed type of content. Mm. So how hard is it for you to keep up with like new trends when it comes to fashion? I don't really focus on trends, to be honest with you. I don't really focus on that side of things. For me, I prefer to um, kind of like do it organically. Mm -hmm. I like some things and I'll pay interest to it. Okay. Um, I'm not really too fast what your social media following is. For me, it's more if you're producing something of quality and I like it. Yeah. Fuck with it. Okay, <laughs> cool, cool. That's better though. That helps you, I guess, create some longevity. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's your own style. Then, mm -hmm. as long as you have your own style, that'll be there forever. And you build with people from quite early in, like me speaking about working with university students. Mm -hmm. um, there's one guy that I know who hasn't even uh, graduated yet. Okay. But I've used his clothes. I featured it in the magazine. I like building those relationships because you never know, like, who he's going to be tomorrow. That's true. Can you categorise, like, your eye, I guess, like, what's your style? Because I know it's, like, hard to do that, but there's, I always, even with my own, there's, I, I, there's a particular eye that I have or th there's things I know I don't like or things I'll look for in clothes or a designer, for example, and then I can, I can say whether I like that or not. Um, for what, personally? Yeah, for yeah, you, personally, personally. yeah. Um, I think I'm attracted to really dark stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, and anything with you know, I'm attracted to like textures, okay. colors, shapes. Mm -hmm. Um, and anything for me, I just find eye catching in a sense. Um, out there, but at the same time, it can be very like simple and subliminal. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm also I like craftsmanship. So what do you mean by craftsmanship? Like craftsmanship, like attention to detail, the okay. cuts, um, and just kind of like tailoring as well. Okay. Like that side of stuff as well as... Do you have history in being in the craftsmanship side of it or um, do you just appreciate the art? Not necessarily, yeah. but I can tell when something's well made. Okay. Yeah. Would you like to venture in that side of it, of the craftsmanship and like making your own clothes? No. No? They just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. How, how come? Um, it was something I previously done, mm -hmm. and um, it, it just wasn't for me mm -hmm. personally. So fair enough. Uh, I hear that. I, I see a lot of stress when it comes to that aspect of it. I would prefer to do styling more than actually making it. Mm -hmm. Like uh, combining other people's different styles. I always love that. With, like Miss mix and matching shit mm. and making like a new piece of art from something that was not intended to be together. Mm -hmm. Like fashion, f somewhat is like physical. Uh, what they say it's a physical body of art that you're putting on. Yeah. yeah. How personal do you make that when you come to expressing your individuality? For myself or when I'm styling? When you're styling. Um. I always have first dibs kind okay. of with what it is that I'm pulling. Okay. So even when I am sourcing, I'm sourcing in the space of things that I might like, but at the same time, I do have to keep in mind that I'm not styling myself and I'm styling someone else who might have completely different tastes to me. Mm -hmm. um, but then even through that, once I have gathered everything, I still 
make a selection through the selection. So I like to um, give myself the upper hand. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a job, I guess, that involves collaboration to a degree. Like pe- people come to you to to style somebody, but that involves uh, a team as well that's trying to execute an idea, I guess. And sometimes the, those things have themes and, and, and such. So how do you, What's what does collaboration look like in in your in your so role? collaboration for me um i like to also do personal projects okay. okay so every once in a while i may choose an artist that um i somewhat believe in and um if their aesthetic and my aesthetic makes sense mm. i like to um, do a personal project with them and for me i will tend to source items of clothes that i think will run accordingly to the theme that it is that we are collaborating on Okay. Um, and in that sense, um, to answer the question, mm-hmm. um, I will usually like handpick a photographer or handpick like the makeup artist or the hairstylist according to what it is that the theme that we're trying to portray. Mm-hmm. So in that sense, it's all very collaborative. Okay. Yeah. Have Have you ever worked with uh, an artist or subjects in, in in some words like that has somewhat different tastes? And different styles and you've like somehow collaborated and to make things work in some way and it probably paid off for a bit and you probably learned something from it as well yeah no 100 percent. i've definitely worked with an artist that um maybe our taste isn't mutual mm-hmm. but there are like little speckets along the way mm-hmm. which i've picked up on okay and then from there i've kind of maybe um re-delivered the sourcing of the clothing that i would have picked out yeah. and made it more appropriate for them but mm-hmm. at the same time for still you yeah a bit in there because i think you gotta build a signature okay especially you got style you gotta build something which is distinctive that like people can know automatically okay yeah that's jermaine <coughs> so, what okay. would one of your signatures be then um to the uninitiated my styling is very playful okay I, I i i like colors i like textures yeah, yeah. um i like fantasy as well okay so fantasy in, in what way yeah fantasy in the way that um like comic books or okay. like oh, okay. um just kind of like you know like i'm kind of like inspired by like japanese culture or um yeah. looking at it in that sense where i'm taking inspiration from a lot of different places okay yeah. okay so jermaine yeah jermaine robinson yeah, yeah. freelance yeah stylist yeah so creative consultant as well mm. yeah what's some of the difficulties you face being a freelancer in your field um some of the difficulties i may say that i face is i think obviously this is a a general one for everyone invoice payments <laughs> yeah. um <laughs> um but I've learned something. I've learned a way to deal with it. You email the person a week before the invoice is due. Okay. That way, you're already in their mind. Okay. So when it is due on the day that it's paid, you can't really have a delay. You okay. have a paper trail as well. Exactly. You have evidence. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So. I hear that. That's a smart. That's a smart plan. I was running through your. Uh, I went through your link tree. Okay. Yeah, and I think it was. It wasn't your Twitter. But it was, is it called a blog? <laughs> what was that? So you had a, a page in which you list all the people you worked with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and yeah, the pages yeah. you've done. So on that, it, it, it said that you entered the industry at 16. Yeah. Why so early? Uh, I think the opportunity was there. <laughs> <laughs> you just see um, the opportunity. The opportunity yeah. was there. I've never been necessarily been like an avid academic person. Okay. Um, so it was either that or I had become a dentist. Oh, that's two very distinct career paths, you know. <laughs> what was the, is the dentist more family, and this is you, uh, or no? I just had like a obsession with like teeth. Okay. <laughs> and um, at one point, I was very much considering it. Okay. But, um, yeah, it changed. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, at sixteen, yeah. If you had to think back, how would you describe the f- uh, perspective on life you had back then? Um, very fresh, very new very um optimistic very spontaneous um just kind of entry level in the game assisting done a lot of assisting 
various people. Um, yeah, pretty much taking everything that I could grab and just running with it and learning from every experience. Okay. And then you see that, yeah, so you're, so I'm assuming to do that, you have to put yourself out in places where you can come into opportunity. Sure. Yeah. And I'm assuming at that point in time as well, you're taking what you're given and yeah. not being picky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. At what point in stage do you think you can like uh, negotiate your, your, your stance more? How long do you have to be in the game to do that? So like, this is what I want. This is my vision. If you don't, I don't work with anyone. I don't have to work with. If that makes sense? Like, how long does it take you? Do you have to build the confidence to do that? Or do you have to wait a period of time in which you have a brand that's uh, solidified, in which uh, corporations respect your creative direction? Some are paying your dues in yeah. some respects. Um, that's a good question, actually. I think, with that being said, I think that can happen at any time. Mm -hmm. um, it's for you to believe in, in your talent, for others to believe in it. Okay. So, um, until you kind of have that power where you're like, okay, you know what, I've I've done enough to do enough, mm. and now it's time to um, reap what you sowed. Mm -hmm. um, I think, yeah. But at the same time, I think you as an individual, you know what time that is. Okay. Yeah. I had a question about um, your inspiration, mm. like as when you wanted to enter fashion and when you, you discovered fashion as a passion for yourself. Because mm. you entered the industry quite young as a 16 year old that's quite young so was there like a form of media or um like i don't know in your own personal style that you said okay this is something i i feel like is me as part of my identity funny enough um so i was interning at a youth magazine in brixton called live okay, okay. it was funded by a creative agency called liberty okay, okay. so um that's kind of like for me that was early beginnings and um you had mentors, you also had people from different industries who would kind of um, help you and uh, navigate, help you navigate spaces. Okay. So that for me was kind of like groundwork in terms of kind of where I, of I am today. Oh, awesome. It's okay. like a, being part of an academy in some sense. Yeah, in yeah. a sense, yeah. Which is important because, for example, uh, I joined, when I joined Urban Error, it gave me exposure to like different like creative influences. So like for example, you were talking about how you're influenced by uh, Japanese culture, mm -hmm. yeah, and that bleeds in your artwork here and there, and you mix that influence with your own personal experiences. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a, an important element in like the creative journey to expose yourself to different stuff, mm -hmm. if you know what I mean. So have you been? Have you always been an outside person, or would you describe yourself as an extrovert? We have an underdog. Underdog, okay. Mm. Um, grew up around a lot of people. Mm. Some of them are doing amazing things right now. Um, I'd always say that you know, I always knew somewhat my time was coming, never mm. knew when it was going to come. But it's just that thing of having consistency and just kind of, you know, going at it and kind of not really giving up. Okay. Um, for me, it's, it's I've done a lot of stopping and starting, that I must admit. Mm. But... Um, I think once you get on to, you know, your kind of journey, I mean, you, you start to see it unfold. Mm. You, you know, you start realizing, okay, cool, this is, this is, you know, this is cool. This is like what I can go with. Mm. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. So, Jermaine, so I'm going to say this, yeah. We're going to open up the field to you, Jermaine. Yeah. And every time he does this, I get scared. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> you do that do you have any like favorite designers or any well, that's a nice top question. yeah i always like asking this uh, maybe some that, that people don't know too much about yeah. as well is or ones that you we do okay there's a brand which i really like called pronounce okay. i really like ways that they do the very playful of their designs and their clothes um i just used some of their bits in a recent editorial i've done this week on actually so um yeah i think that's probably my favorite at the okay. moment Awesome. And how um how difficult is it in uh contacting uh PRs and stuff for for clothes and stuff and sourcing like how w are there any requirements or things that you know you should be established in in order to like have those successful transactions and stuff Um I would say it's about building a relationship okay. first of all um introducing yourself to them your work 
um, letting them be aware of you. Mm -hmm. um, it's also good to, uh, I went to press days last year, actually, I went to a couple. It's good to put a name to a face. Okay. <laughs> Um, in terms of difficulty, it's definitely it's something which is it's just practice makes perfect. Okay. The more you do it, um, the more they become acquainted with you. Okay. So, um, but at the beginning, um, you know, don't feel any way if your email doesn't get responded. <laughs> 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 um, you know, it's just it doesn't align with who they are. Mm -hmm. So once you have that alignment, then it's fine. But I just uh, I've said even to my assistants, you know, um, contact brands or instagram brands or you know upcoming designers who are at where you're at mm -hmm. right now in your career okay because it makes it makes more sense mm -hmm. unless you're like i don't know styling someone huge at a really early date then i, I wouldn't contact prs right now okay okay what um what changes would you like to see about the fashion industry what, what change would you like to see in the fashion industry in the future, maybe some things that you you had to go through that you probably younger play, um, people in the game probably didn't you don't want to see them go through. Either. Um, more diversity, okay, especially within London. Yeah, um, there's a lot of us out here. A lot Definitely. of us aren't getting light. It's only up until now. Mm -hmm. The recent stance. Um, so yeah, definitely more diversity. Perfect. A lot of people that are amazingly talented. And they're still pushing. But at the same time, I do like that people are going off and doing their own thing. Definitely. And kind of like like you guys making your own channels and not necessarily waiting around for someone to give you like the, the, you know, the, the green flag. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Jermaine. So how can someone contact you if they want to work with you? And can you describe your style in a way in which, let's say, this is a pitch? Um, so if you want to contact me to work with me, you go onto my Instagram page. Okay. There on there's a button there which says email. Okay. So okay. Just drop me an email with um a CV. Okay. And somewhat work. Okay. Because I understand everyone's at different levels. Um, but I just need to see that you're proactive. Okay. Side of assisting. Like a <laughs> like a portfolio, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a little portfolio. It doesn't have to be anything amazing, but it just needs to have somewhat body of work. Okay. Um, and then. My own personal style, is that what you're asking? Yeah, so for example, uh, I've seen some of your work and there is a, a, like an individual style that bleeds through. Mm. Yeah, so for corporations mm. on branding, what type of brands would you work best with due to your style? Let me rephrase it like that. Um, I would, brand-wise, I, I would love for Nike to contact me. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Um, I feel like I do a pretty good job okay. with them because I'm very much into like high performance wear. Okay. So, um, and I know that they've got a part of them which has that stuff. Okay. Yeah. Nike needs that though because some of the tra tracksuit wise, I think they've been sipping. They're also Tesla. Tesla. Okay, that's two <laughs> different brands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah those two very different brands. But Jermaine, yeah, it was very nice speaking to you, freelance stylist and creative consultant, which means you create and you consult. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> wonderful combination, wonderful duo, yeah. Now, we're going to leave the floor open to you. So I would say for the last couple of minutes, who are you looking at at the moment? Just influence-wise. It can be anything from uh, anime to music to movies, to other fashion creators. Mm. Yeah, or any selfish promo. Yeah, it could yeah. even be you. You could be influencing yourself. Be shameless about the self-promotion yeah. as well. Yeah, be shameless. That's There's no about. shame here. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, I'm interested. You know what? Yeah, I actually want to work with Pasu. Pasu? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I can see that working. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm going to put that the answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and outside of that, I want to do some work in the States. Okay. Okay. Um, any state in particular? <laughs> um, I worked with one rapper from Baltimore. Okay. Mm -hmm. Called Butch Dawson. He was okay. cool. Um, definitely would like to do some more work out there. Yeah. yeah. And it's like the, those quiet sort of undiscovered 
states I find interesting. So yeah, there's, so do I. there's little pockets of that yeah. of the US where there's like something completely different going on to what everyone else is doing. Right. And it's it's crazy. Right. Yeah. Um and then outside of that, for me, I think I would okay, so for me, so for me. Shameless self Be shameless. shameless. Um, I would like some more commercial jobs. Okay, as well. So we need that bag. Yeah, we definitely need that bag. Yeah, some more commercial jobs would be great. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now. Where can people find you, man? Yeah. So you social find media. me. It's just um at Jermaine R Robinson. Okay. On Instagram. Insta. Um, and then from there you uh, everything's linked in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Link so tree as well yeah, brings you there front and well. center. Um, yeah, and just give me a shout if you want to. I'm always up for taking on assistance. Um, you know, so if you if you feel like you know, got something, just give me a shout. Okay. 